The time is 6.05, Wednesday, April 13th. Our call is in order. We will start with course roll call. Uh, President Hirano. Present. Executive Vice President Morris is present. Vice President of Campus Internal Affairs. Is that class? Vice President of External Affairs. Is <coughs> uh, Vice President of Finance, Karim, is absent. Irish Director is excused late for class. Personnel Director? Present. Marketing and Promotions Director, excused absent. Election Director? Here. Transfer and Social Director is excused at, is absent. I have to check on the excuse part. Uh, President Pro, pro Tempore? Here. Senator Alcantara? Here. Senator Bosom? Here. Senator Frio? Present. Senator Chen? Here. Senator David is sick. Senator, Senator Lopez is sick. Or Go for uh, Senator Keelhart. Here. Senator Chow. Here. Senator Pereira. Here. Senator Tally. Present. Senator Vargas. Absent. Senator Sunda is in the class. <coughs> She's absent. And Senator Frinto is absent as well. We'll move forward to approve the agenda. Um, the agenda, you shall have a copy in your emails as well. Uh, as extra copies for anyone who probably wishes to have one. Uh, please note that Senator Jackson is here. And any amendments to the agenda? Point of clarification. Yes. Is executive session closed session? Yes. Any amendments or clarifications for the agenda? Seeing none, are there objections to adopt the agenda as presented? Seeing none again. The agenda will be adopted and presented. Moving on to approval of Senate meeting minutes 12, 20. We will pass them wrong, long, sorry, and sign them after you proofread them. And as our custom, will be adopted as signed. <coughs> Moving on to ex officio reports. Um, any ex officio you should present to the board at this time? Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so NRHH and RHA has been hosting elections for the past week, and we're continuing to do so this week and next week. Last Monday, we held the executive president um, elections for the Residence Halls Association, and the new EP for next year is Juliet Sengeling. She is currently our national uh, communication coordinator. Um, the Lillian Building President elections were last night. Annalise Warner will be the building president for the upcoming school year. The uh, AI Building President election is tonight. Pentland Hills building election is tomorrow night, and then the Glenmore building president election is next Thursday. The NRHH president and vice president elections were last week. The vice president position is still open, so we'll be continuing with applications for that um, for the remaining of the quarter. And then I'll be returning as the president for NRHH next year. Um, Pentland Hills RHA is hosting a program this Friday. It's called Nine Night. It's uh, from 8 to 10 p.m. in the Pentland Hills Bear Cave. It's a science night filled with episodes of science-related television, as well as science demonstrations and science-related DIY crafts. Um, Glenmore RHA also has a program uh, next Tuesday, the 19th, and that is from 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, in Glenmore K106-108, which is uh, right next to the pool. Uh, the program is called Be More Green, so residents will have the opportunity to learn how to be more sustainable and eco-friendly. Um, and then RHA is hosting a large-scale program uh, Friday, April 29th from 5 to 10 p.m. in the Pentland Hills Green. Um, at that program, RHA will be unveiling the new RHA logo, which represents the new traditions uh, with the same community aspect of the residents and staff love about RHA. And there'll be carnival games, uh, light DJ, karaoke, photo booths, student DJs, and performances. I yield my time. Thank you. Any questions for the presenter? Seeing none, thank you again. Thank you. Hi everyone, so um, this Saturday, CSP in conjunction with KUCR is having its 19th annual Radio Aslan Music Festival. Um, this year we'll be having MC Magic, Tex Texas Tornadoes, and Kid Frost, um, and Los Sleepwalkers, 
the Mad Latins, the Generations World War Band. So it's $25 in advance or $30 at the door. Um, tickets are available at CSP and at the University Theater uh, box office. Also, um, we're already taking applications for Juegos Aslan, which will be happening uh, May 1st. It's a boss, uh, softball tournament that will be happening. Uh, there's already four teams signed up. It would be really fun if uh, ACCR signs up and my team could beat it. Any <laughs> 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 uh, questions for the presenter? Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Seeing none, no one answering his challenge. Okay then. <laughs> Thank you, Kat, for your time. Oh wait, you challenged him? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, softball. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. You can sign up. Yes. You said you signed up for NCSP? CSP. Guys, we should really do it. Let's talk about it after the meeting. All right, correct. Hey there, um, before I turn to any of the next issues. Hi everybody, how's everyone doing tonight? Good. So on behalf of USP, uh, we just celebrated our one year anniversary on Tuesday, so thank you for the whole team out. One year anniversary. Um, yeah, so we're really excited to celebrate again. We've been here, we've been here one year, it's hard to believe that it's already been a year, but you know, we have many, many years to come. Um, so we'll give a couple things coming up. First is uh, next week's civic engagement. We have a workshop on how to be how to be involved, uh, how to be politically involved, how to do community work. It'll be um, April twenty first, hub in hub three fifty five from twelve to one. I really recommend putting the word on that. It's always good to, to be involved with election time, not just here at UCR, but you know on a greater scale. Um, how to be politically involved? Actually, like you don't if you don't know where to go to. Um, it's a good place to start. Um, and midterms are coming up. So week five, we'll be hosting a midterm coloring stress relief session every day of the week, all week five, from 12 to 2, uh, in USP. So you get to color, and there'll be like snacks, and so it's a, it's a chill time. I definitely recommend you all stop by. Stress, it's a, I think coloring in adults is like a real thing now. So like it's super popular. Um, I do it, so it's so really cool. Um, <laughs> So next thing, our biggest event coming up this year uh, for Bullet is our annual banquet. It will be our seventh annual banquet on Friday, May 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. in Pub 302. Uh, I really, really, really would love to see this year if AC Sarah put a table together. We always recommend students like get the student orgs and get a table of 10. Um, and we always have a lot of student orgs come out and do like, um, just do a table. It's a fun night. You know, it help, it goes to, all the funds go to scholarships for <coughs> students. Last year we really raised our most ever, which was $6,500. And, you know, we'll just keep building on that. So I would really love to see that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Your point is well taken. Yeah. Um, when is the event again? Friday, May 27th. Oh, and tickets are $20 for students. There you go. That's important. And you can buy tickets at USP or online at investinginthedream.eventbrite.com. Any questions for the next issue? Seeing none, congratulations on the anniversary again. Thank you. Any other members of the next issue which present this time? Seeing none, I move forward the agenda to public forum. <coughs> Any members of the public wish to present to this board at this time? I didn't know if I was supposed to go to Exhibition, but I feel more comfortable in public forum. Um, so, representing um, Marcella's office, I again want to invite all of you all. If you are interested, we have positions open. Um, we want to make sure that we get as many students to understand to understand the things that she does in her office. Sorry, that didn't work for me. Sorry. Sorry. Any questions from members of the public? Um, uh, and then following a separate announcement, um, uh, Dina and myself are hosting a subcommittee in Diversity Council. Um, we're hoping to pass a resolution, um, so Corey will be seeing you, um, from my understanding. Thursdays at 1. Thursdays at 1. Those are the exact same times as Diversity Council meetings. Um, 
So we're, we're hoping to have either myself or Dina attend, um, but our legislation is um, being pre-developed in conjunction with a lot of cultural organizations. So um, to give a little bit of pretext, um, everyone, I hope you all are aware of what occurred here on our campus, but across the UC system, there's been a lot of hate crimes and um, just different events um, regarding like cultural <coughs> students, um, in general, students of color and uh, cultural centers. So we wanna make sure that we condemn all uh, hate, hate crimes or any attacks on students of color, um, especially since following the statement of, of principles uh, <coughs> of tolerance. So we wanna make sure that we also kind of move forward um, in addressing and expanding the statement. So that's what we're hoping to do and call to action with the resolution. We want to have um, contextual information between student organizations. I can only speak for one organization as Jasa Assembly. I know that it's been brought up as um, possibly creating a statement in conjunction with all Chicano Latino organizations, fraternity and sororities. Um, but following, we do hope to have something um, in line uh, on behalf of Diversity Council. So with that said, we are presenting um, everything at tomorrow's Diversity Council meeting. We already got a new room. So if you all are interested, um, feel free to contact Elshon um, or uh, Nick um, or myself if you want to know the uh, daytime and meeting. Thank you so much for your Appreciate it. Were there any questions for the presenter? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Hello, I'm Danielle Hamilton. I was told to come here by my friend Raul that I met, but basically I just have a community service idea, and I kind of want to get a group together, so whoever wants to join me, I guess, because I've been doing this for the year that I've been on campus already. I pick up trash on campus, because I notice a lot of people leave their trash, or trash will fly out of the trash can, and it just doesn't look good, and it's not good for the environment. So, I was told that you guys would help me figure out the tools I need in order to put that plan into action. So, any advice? Can you tell me a little more about your uh, community service project. Maybe meet like once a month or once a week, whatever works for everybody. I do it every day, just for maybe 30 minutes or so, and just go around with bags or whatever, just pick up trash, put in trash cans, that's it. I so the community's kind of supposed to be what we would do here. I, I personally would love to work with you on that. Sweet. Um, would you mind writing down your contact information? Um, okay. Is there anyone here who would? Else, are you interested in? Okay. Um, how do I do this? Um, let's do it by. Well, I'll pass around a. Take her, her contact information. Yeah, her contact information. Uh, get the city or whoever is put their uh, their arms out, and then. Sounds like your suggestion. We'll email. Would anyone mind passing a piece of paper to the government public? <laughs> wondering what would be the best way to like kind of pass on that information. I've sent out emails before, but I know that we all get a lot of emails, so I'm just wondering like what's the best kind of tool because like Guitar Center was like if you have open mic nights, we're interested in collaborating. Um, if we have like, I know that um, there was um, 
credit union was interested in giving financial literacy workshops. There's a lot of opportunities for collaboration that I found in just talking to people. So I'm just wondering, like, how should I pass on those that information to you all, if that makes sense? Um, did you say someone was interested in doing a financial literacy workshop? Yes. Uh, did you get that contact? Your contact with you? Yes, I did. Uh, so I'd be happy to take that. So okay. I can fill that. Uh, Is there any other centers be interested in, in this information? Oh, uh, I was going to say, because um, there's a lot of community resources, right? it would be sort of difficult to just have a general like thing of how they can help it, probably more tailored to what people are working on. So like, I know Delshawn's on finance, that's why you would be more interested in the finance workshop, but in terms of just disseminating like all that information generally, I don't really know how it would work, only because like we don't really probably need the information relevant projects that we're working on. So for example, like a credit union, like I don't, I'm not really doing anything, so that would be good for financial literacy. But then if there were other partners I didn't know about that could relate to maybe the mural or food security or something like that, that would be good. But yeah, it's just difficult to know like what, because there's a lot of resources and also a lot of projects. It would be hard to narrow it down. I've always been a fan of uh, always learning new things, and I can't see more information being a bad thing. Um, give to me, we'll find a way to make it accessible to anyone else who's interested. So if it turns out if I can just come up with something useful, it'll be available. Sounds fantastic, thank you. Of course. Any other members of the public this time? Seeing none, we will move this past to executive cabinet board. We'll start with President Hirano, if she's ready. Yeah, I'm ready. <coughs> um, hi, everyone. So, first, I'd like to start with the Student Voice Committee. Um, so, an application has been sent out, and um, it will remain active, the application will, until Friday at uh, noon. Um, then Emily and I will be working on um, figuring out who will be on this committee. Basically what this committee will do is it will be like a streamline from students' voices to ASCCR to the Chancellor Wilcox's office. Um, so if you or any of your friends are interested in doing this, you have to be a student next year to apply. Um, I really recommend it. Um, yeah. And let's see, GSA will also be um, on this committee too, so we're trying to make it reflective of our entire campus being able to meet with um, Chancellor Wilcox. Uh, moving on, so week one I talked about the citation free parking during finals week um, with TAPS. Um, so I finally got the data. So for fall finals week, about 288 people used it. Um, we decided to do the same exact um, structure for winter. Um, all we did was increase the marketing, and 226 people used it, so that's um, a little bit less, like maybe 60 people less used it. Um, so I brought this up in ECAP meeting, and we decided we're not going to drop this project, but instead we're going to work on ways um, that we could better it, so maybe getting different lots. Um, one of the concerns is the blue lots, the permits, you have to pick them up at the TAPS office. Maybe we could distribute those at the ASUCR office instead. So I'm very open to collaboration on making this project better, especially for spring. Um, a couple hundred students are using it, but I'd really like to see more like 500 students using it instead of just 220. Um, next, our gowns. So Barnes & Noble has given me 30 caps and gowns to award to 30 graduating seniors. Um, the competition is currently going on this week and ends on Friday. And um, basically I'm asking students who want to participate to take a picture either with the UCR landmark or in UCR attire and explain how UCR has prepared them for post-grad life. Um, so please let your friends know about this um, uh, event. Only a couple people really have sent in pictures, so it'd be really great. Um, it's, you have really good chances if you tell your friends to do it. Super easy to do. Uh, next, the office guide. I also brought this up during week one. But Julia and I have been working on creating this guide for um, uh, incoming student representatives. Um, so basically what this guide has is a bunch of administrators, faculty, and staff, their contact information, what they've done for ASUCR, and what they um, can collaborate with ASUCR on in the future. Um, and this should be done within the next couple weeks once elections come to an end and um, we can pass this on to the future leaders of ASUCR. Um, the first year guide, so I'm working on this with a couple interns and fellows. And um, we're bringing this information together by Friday. I already talked about this, so I'm not going to go into detail on it. But all the information should be in Friday. So um, if anyone wants to help with editing it with me, that's probably going to be the biggest task. Um, I would really appreciate any help with that. 
Um, and most importantly for my report, um, the ASUCR Chancellor's Committee on Sexual Harassment and Sexual Violence Prevention um, will be having our first event called The Haze on April 19th, which is next Tuesday from 7 to 9 p.m. Doors open at 6.15, um, but you can pick up your ticket from the University Theater by Olmstead at 1 o'clock. Um, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you, um, you all have been invited to it, so I'd really appreciate it if you could share it on your personal Facebook pages so that we can ensure that a lot of the students will be here. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Any questions for the President? Yes. Yeah, uh, so for the resource guide you mentioned, the first year one, was that, um, you talked about it before, was that just sort of all of the on-campus resources that are available? Yes, so the first year guide, sorry, there's two guides, the first year guide and the office guide. Okay. So the first year guide will have um, like all the resource centers, information on that just for first years who are coming in so that they can understand what resources are available to them, but also um, like what food options there are, what cool study spots there are, just to kind of introduce them to the campus in a different way that um, like a fourth year giving advice to a first year. And then the office guide is for um, incoming ASUCR representatives. Okay, yeah, I want to talk about something similar to the first year guide, so I'll get in contact with you about that. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions for the president? Seeing none, we were in my report. Um, very similar to our report last week, or before last week, uh, three important projects that my office is working on is firstly the um, creating an institutional share drive for uh, institutional memory for this organization. Um, we're looking at ways to expand it, not just for um, executive cabinet, but for Senate as well as for judicial in some capacity, uh, as well as working on the end of the year banquet, which we could use any help in the centers who wish to volunteer. And um, lastly, one of the centers asked me to mention the state of the office this morning, as well as the past couple of days. Um, basically, a lot of trash has been left around, and we need to be sure careful to clean up after ourselves. I know the um, president and I have said this multiple times, but hopefully this will be the last time. Um, and any questions for any of my report? Seeing none, we'll move forward to the Vice President of Campus Internal Affairs, Senate Secretary. Thank you. Is there anything for you, Patrick? All good. Senator Arnold? Yeah, of course it was. Moving on to um, the Vice President of Campus Internal Affairs report. The Food Trip Festival took place yesterday and was a great success. Huge thank you to everyone who volunteered, including Senators Musa Vargas and Senator Casey Thielhart, as well as the uh, Chief of Staff, Joe Hanna, and a number of very helpful students. This project goes a long way to improve our campus culture and bring pride and look forward to seeing it <coughs> Bike share program. Now that the ink has dried the contract, there are a number of things left to do before the community. Many of these things will happen after um, the vice president graduates. It will therefore be up to next year's AS to successfully oversee its implementation. Uh, in the meantime, I will be setting up meetings with capital planning to discuss contract negotiation with University Village regarding land use agreements. Caps has offered a store space for the bikes when they arrive as we wait for Zaxter folks, folks to come out to UCR and install them. A marketing campaign will be started to raise awareness and generate buzz for this initiative. One of the goals of a bike share is to encourage people to adapt their habits to incorporate alternative transportation. And if we convince the community wants to do that, I will consider it a success, or Vice President will consider it a success. Lastly, a shout out to Ains for generously providing an entire car full of food for our entry. We have all come to know and love the snacks Aim husbands brings, and now because of the surplus, the free pantry will be stocked with all sorts of variety of snacks to for students seeking to close that hunt gap. Let's all give a hand to Aims. <laughs> Vice President of Finance, does the city report? Is it the committee report or is it the Affairs, Summer Schaefer is excused late for now. Uh, they, she did send a report, which I will read the following. Uh, SLC, a lot of people have been focusing on SLC and preparing, preparing for it, as well as scheduling meetings representatives for week five. There will be three mandatory meetings this week for those attending. Um, otherwise, email 
the Vice President at SSHAF007 at UCR.edu. There are still two to four spots open. If anyone wants to attend, let the Vice President know right away. Um, external staff, Oscar and Brian, are scheduling meetings with representatives for Lobby Day. There are, if, there are excusable letters made for anyone missing class at the front counter that are so inconvenient. We'll be meeting at lot 24, 215 on Friday morning and arriving back in Riverside like Monday night. It is a great experience with a minute. Brian is writing a list of nearby places to eat. Either Brian or Wade will sit in for FISA as proxy at board meeting. Half meetings are Fridays at 2 p.m. Voter registration is every Monday and Wednesday at the rest halls from 5 to 8.30 and every Wednesday at the Bears Gym during the day. Rock vote is May 17th, Wednesday. Voter awareness day, May 19th. Last day to register at all in California is May 23rd. I just have to know. Meeting with housing about quote unquote door storming. Training day at 3 and 4 for those who want to register voters. We will have more money and they are mandatory if you want to register others. General report UCSA board meeting May 7th to 9th. Thank you. Jim and Kathy for setting the budget allocation for student services fee. I bring to this to uh, in the weeks coming to the UCSA board meeting. Uh, there's the vice president is setting up a meeting with Liz Mondragon. Uh, fellow John went to the diversity council and discussed the hate crimes, expecting the decisions, and if they need collaboration. Reach out to all the hospital hall slash resource centers to meet if they need anything or ever want to collaborate. Creating a Google Drive to our work similar to other offices. Each position is creating a transition binder for those coming next year. Uh, setting the petition HR 230 around, around and brought it up as possible legislation for SOC. Uh, for a reminder, uh, HR 230 is the legislation that the member of the public brought up last week on the um, sexual assault areas. Tuition freeze ends after this year, and May teach-ins and license will occur um, in response to that. It Tom. is. I move to extend by time by five minutes. Motion to extend time by five minutes. Second. Second by Senator Perra, made originally by Senator Talley. Is there any objections? Seeing none. Um, tuition freeze extends, or sorry, ends after this year which means tuition will be going up. May teach-ins and actions will occur in response to that. It is Sexual Awareness Month that is ran by Planned Parenthood and Highlanders Against Sexual Violence, ASCC, and other important committees that say show supported by UC consent, and will be included in the campus party email. Uh, the, the Vice President also redrafting bylaws and asked if there are any suggestions. The, the uh, external fellows, Winston, is going over LGBTQ statistics and being fair on May 18th. John and Anna are working on Black Power and School Prison Pipeline Week of Action Week 6 and Work Years <coughs> Appreciation Day May 19th and includes reports. Perfect, perfect. Perfect time to have some. <laughs> um, Mr. President, I just finished reading your report. Are there any questions for. <laughs> 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 yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, still oh. I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Are there any questions for the. Your vice president. Yes. Um, will you explain more of the Planned Parenthood event? Um, like when I okay. say it. And yeah. Um, so that's the reason I wanted to get it because some of the some of the things I, I just put bullet points that I could um, like elaborate a little bit on. Um, so yeah. Uh, so, vice president, two quick reminder. Um, we extended time by five minutes, so you have three minutes and thirty seconds left exactly. Okay. Um, so. That was, it's just like working in um, collaboration. Um, they're putting on a, like a sex week, so it's not specific to sexual assault, but um, there's a lot happening. Um, it's all next week. So, um, and I'm gonna post like the, it, it, like the specific, so, sorry, I'm out of breath. Um, I'm gonna post the specific dates and times for the sex week and for the, um, everything that's happening with the Highlanders against sexual violence and all the other communities. So if there's anything for your committee that you want me to post on my page to get consent to like volunteers out to, um, I'll do that. Your consent is mostly coalition building since there wasn't much of a committee um, when I came into it. Um, so is that kind of yeah. Thank you. Um, 
interested or know anyone who's still interested in lobbying, you know that that was already said, but um, it's going to be a really awesome opportunity. I'm really excited for, for it to be happening. Um, if you know of anyone that wants to volunteer to register, we had um, some people come today. It was super fun. Um, so let me know and I'll make sure that they know how to register voters. Um, I guess if I if you if you have any questions for anything that was on here and need any elaboration, I can give it to you. Any questions for Vice President? Seeing none, move forward in the agenda. Um, the Vice President of Finance, I'm assuming that report will be in the committee report. Yep. Yeah. And we will move towards the directors. I will start with the personnel director. Hello everyone. Um, so the spring committee meeting list has been compiled and sent out to interns this week so that they can start uh, attending um, the committee uh, meetings. Um, I'm also working on compiling like a weekly checklist to hold the interns accountable on the expectations of them, um, so that they are going to, so that they are holding their office hours and actually meeting with their mentors and um, actually going to these. Um, um, Meeting meetings so that we can like check them off and everything, just so that we are ensuring that they actually do fulfill um, the requirements. Um, I'm also working on my, with my committee to edit the bylaws. Um, and in regards to opportunity to get involved with um, the SCCR, uh, we do have the student voice committee that is uh, that actually kind of um, explained in her report. Um, the applications are due, we said, um, Friday at noon. Um, and then we're reviewing it on Friday. Uh, we also have two openings for GCAP. Um, I do not plan on sending out campus um, wide email for those two positions, uh, but Angelica Tan, um, who is the chair of the Academic Affairs, also um, wanted to create a committee for her textbook exchange. Um, so I will be working with her, and for that um, opportunity, I do plan on sending out a campus wide email so that we can. Um, get that committee going, um, and then have it started for next year also. That's all my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Yes. Oh, that's not a question. Um, I was planning on forming an ad hoc committee for the mural business. So I don't know if you needed to be involved with that, or like, I already have an idea of like the people I want to be on the committee from certain places, but yeah, just so you know what will be happening. Uh, of course. Uh, why don't you just send me the list of names and then like, I was having like in the file, but then if you already have the people that you have, that like, you'd already, and I don't really need to be involved. Ad hoc committees are generally pretty flexible. I would assume, at least with my work understanding of our rules and this board, that you just form the ad hoc committee for a specific purpose, um, create these names, and if you want additional input, send to the director to um, send out for, or at least add on anyone else who is interested. Mm -hmm. That was a good opportunity for student input. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the director? Thank you. Seeing none, uh, we'll move over to who sits next to The National Transfer Director, she is absent. Is there a report? Yes. Yes. Nice. Um, <laughs> uh, the Transfer National Student Director. The transfer budget. The transfer and the transfer budget. Oh, thank you, Madam State. Will be held May 15th in Hub 355. We're working in collaboration with Student Life, Tau Sigma, and Transfer Student Association to put it in the year banquet for transfer students. Our hope for this is to become an annual event. Uh, we have come up with an agenda and budget for this already, and we'll be meeting with the head of Student Life Wednesday on 412 morning to discuss our budget and agenda. Transfer orientation. We are currently working on a resolution to present to student life on how to approve transfer orientation. That's uh, Transfer Resource Center. We're also looking into the steps needed to in order to turn the transfer community lounge to an actual resource center. Any questions for the director can be of course directed towards her and her email needs public knowledge. Anyone interested in being involved with projects of course can get their her <coughs> from there. Moving on to um, outreach. Outreach report. Thank you. 
we go on to the outreach report. Uh, the director has completed the outreach workshop that was held on March 31st at 1 p.m. He's doing a live conference room. He has to admit 19 organizations were presented, and only a few of them have already gone through the outreach grant applications, giving the director a sign that the majority of the 19 have yet complied to the grant. Um, the director will be conducting two outreach hearings again this quarter, it's the one originally. Uh, the date that was that the application is due is on April 21st. The two dates of the outreach hearings on April are April 26th and 28th at 11 to 12.30 uh, respectively. The remaining amount of funds left for this quarter is $25,487.53. And, and the director hopes to allocate most of this in those two hearings and includes the report. Again, if any organizations wish to, or to wish to contact the outreach director or any of the members of the board have any questions, you can contact them directly. I believe the uh, <coughs> marketing director report is fairly short. Um, there is an ECAP spring quarter with flyers, meeting flyers I'm assuming, um, and it has been helping the law attorney promote several events. Remember clubs in order to utilize or social media, uh, and the director will help promote keep tabling going for everyone who signed up for tabling, and that includes the director's report. Election director, you're item on the agenda. Do you want to do your report here or for your committee at the next meeting? Um, you want to have separate information. Report. Okay, then election director, your report. Alrighty, so um, for elections last week, uh, we were getting finishing touches put together just for this week for voting to open up. Uh, we purchased $899.97 total in giveaways for raffles. Uh, almost $500 of that was uh, from items uh, from the student store ranging and assorted into bundles uh, ranging from $25 to $70. Uh, that also includes 10 months Berry Farm tickets which uh, we still have four remaining for those who have yet to vote. There's two handed out uh, tomorrow and then two handed out on Friday. Uh, and last week we added a warning regarding coercive lap topping, which puts pressure on the students at the top of the elections ballot. <coughs> uh, for elections this week, the voting opened up Monday at 8 a.m. Uh, an email was sent out to the student body about lap topping on Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, a lot of emails were sent to me following this. Uh, informing elections <coughs> about incidents where there was laptoping. Quite a lot of those were not coercive, and uh, but there were several that are going to be looked into uh, potentially by the judicial council. Uh, and candidates have been discouraged from engaging in laptoping either way. Another email regarding laptoping went out this morning, which established uh, very clear guidelines both for candidates, volunteers, and for students. It was. Uh, created with collaboration between the Elections Committee and the Judicial Council to establish what it is, uh, what's acceptable, and what company behavior is unacceptable, which can include uh, harassment or being followed or uh, the refusal to accept a negative answer. Um, and fortunately, after that, uh, there was not a rush of emails, so that's the good news. Carl's Jr. was distributed today. For those of you who didn't see that earlier, we had a truck. Uh, for the first 216 students who showed evidence of voting today, there was a lot of interest. I think it was an overall success. Uh, elections ballot site, unfortunately, was down from approximately 4.30 p.m. yesterday until noon today, where it was open until 2 p.m. and then reopened at approximately 2.30. Uh, the reason for this was it was to allow the uh, the vendor to make system updates. The issue was that they first reported that it was going to take approximately four hours. It extended much longer than that due to technical issues. The updates were not working uh, due to their testing. And so uh, that's really the reason why they required a couple more hours of work and the delay there. Uh, but voting will remain open until Friday night at midnight. Uh, so there are still two more days for winning prizes. Uh, anyone can claim a raffle ticket so long as they show evidence of their vote, uh, whether that's email site confirmation or a date stamp screenshot. It has to be for voting from that day. And that concludes my report.
to clarify the structure real quickly. Sure. Uh, Friday at 12 o'clock is when voting closes? Friday at noon. Okay. Um, any questions for the election director? Yes. Okay, I have two things. Uh, I forgot the first one. Um, so, would there be any, um, like, is the, I don't know how much if we pay for the outside company that does elections or how that works. Will there be any remittance? Because there's pretty much a full day of elections that was lost when we had to that. So, that's like, yeah, like 20 hours, almost a full day. So, is there any way to redress that? Or, I mean, obviously, we can't get those hours back. And I don't, I haven't heard any conversation about extending elections, and I'm definitely not recommending that. I was wondering if there's any way to, like, for those 20 hours that were lost, if there's any, like, way to make that up on their end, or that could affect, I um, Well, we pay per vote, and so the site is up, and if there were no votes casted during those hours, which there weren't, then we're not getting charged for those services. Okay. So it's it's not being at a cost to us. Okay. I didn't remember my second thing. So we talked, um, talking a lot about laptoping. No, we struck that with elections code, so the yes. thing that I'm confused about is is laptop being considered a violation? I know it's been like a campaign, like it's coercive not to do that. But you mentioned that there were violations of it. So since it's like stricken from the bylaws, or these, I don't understand how it's a violation. Or like, yeah, just more on how that's working. It's the accompanying behavior. And so it's not the act of laptoping itself, but if it's in the course of you attempting to laptop someone, uh, you're harassing them, or uh, you take possession of their item for a few moments. Uh, or um, like you're following someone, uh, and that was something that I was going to go on to uh, give a few examples later. Um, so you'll see a little bit, of, you'll see a few examples kind of illustrating what the problematic behavior is that is a violation, where the act of laptoping itself is not. Okay. Did that clarify? Yeah. Um, would you clarify also, so I read the email today that kind of laid out what coercive mm -hmm. like behavior yeah. could be. So does that mean the violation stuff didn't start until that email got sent out and it was clarified to everyone what coercion was? Because my, my concern is like, I'm, you know, what if someone didn't know right. on Monday and right. then the email was received on Wednesday? So. Um. The things that could result in violations are things that were made more clarified by the guidelines, but still violate the elections code. So harassment is against the elections code, and so it still can be adjudicated on, even though the guidelines specifically outlining it, I, outlining harassment behavior wasn't. Sent out. For example, like grabbing or holding someone's phone. Like if uh, someone gives you permission to do it. On Monday, like how, how do you? That's not necessarily you know, like harassment, um, but yeah. there's situations in which like individuals were pestered to the point that uh, one individual described being panicked. That's harassment. <laughs> so, you know, by uh, by like exactly like I was saying, by refusing to take a negative answer, yeah. uh, which is part of why I added in the part about consent. Only affirmative consent is acceptable. Yeah, I, I just don't want there to be concern coming out, like if something was filed on Monday, but yeah, it's not, yeah. I'm just bring up concern. No, we're certainly trying to take all sides into account. And you know, I do think it's uh, benefited by, you know, I have several years of experience in dealing with some of these reports, um, or similar reports, on top of the, ju the justices who also have uh, at least a year's experience. that campaign, what is generally considered laptop, correct? Like harassment and and define that further. A company. Okay. Yes. And harassment is, you, you based harassment as illegal on the Lexus code, correct? Am I still following? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
I was kind of, I was wondering where you defined um, got the group of harassment in the bylaws or in the elections code. I agree wholeheartedly that you should harass students from the vote, obviously. Um, we were checking to see if where harassment was in the elections code and the only mention of it is in the point of negative uh, yeah. As far as that goes, the use of that term harassment um, Unless I was just has been brought in that same discussion, the same collaboration between elections committee and judicial council. Um, that was essentially the collaborative effort of you know going under. Um, I won't be able to speak while I look. Um, elections director and the elections committee are given the power through, uh, through the preamble in the elections code uh, to ensure a democratic and fair <laughs> process. Uh, in which, you know, uh, intimidation uh, aspects such as that directly undermine such a process. And so harassment in and of itself, while it's not being defined explicitly in the elections code, is still undermining those aspects, and that's where we have the responsibility to accept them. Okay, I'm okay with that. That's really good. <laughs> 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 Uh, any other questions for the election director? Saying no, we're going to move forward to the uh, discussion item presentation from the athletic director. Um, Nicholas Smith Jones, correct? Correct. Oh. Thank you. What a very amazing and articulate group. I've enjoyed watching you all in your um, element here. Thank you for inviting me, Alan. And I've, I've seen some folks that I know very well, Sean. Um, Taylor, um, thank you for having me here and, and being able to provide some information about what's going on in, athletic, on a, in athletics and what um, we would like to do as partners with the Senate and um, you all sharing some of the opportunities with our student athletes to get involved in some of the things that you're doing. I was able to hear a lot of things that you have going on. so. Much of the same things that we do as ambassadors for the campus. Um, our student athletes are not just athletes, they're students first. Um, and I'd like to say that they're also ambassadors. So they have an opportunity to do what they do in the, on the campus, as well as go out in this community, Riverside, the Inland Empire, but also all over the country. So uh, we take much pride in what we do and we try to train them and teach them how to work as an integrated part of the campus and not just a siloed. Um, Department of Athletics. So with that being said, um, just to give you a little background about myself, I've been here about nine months. I've been an athletic director before. I was at a Division II institution, um, Clark Atlanta, which is a minority serving institution. Then I transitioned to the University of Texas at San Antonio, another minority serving institution. So I do have a heart for diversity, for um, being able to uh, provide opportunities and for young people to grow and aspire um, athletics is just my avenue. So I was a former student athlete. Um, my nine months here has been awesome. We've had the most successful sports season um, in our Division I history. Um, most people in the community, <laughs> most people in the community smile at me and think it's you know attributed to some of the things that I've done. But I always remind them that it's the student athletes, it's the coaches, it's the support of the general student population, the administration, the faculty. It is a whole lot of make makeup to uh, make those things happen. Uh, what I believe as an athletic director, my role and responsibility is to hold our department accountable. So that's what I've, I've done. Um, and so when I arrived, I shared my vision for my coaches and student athletes, and that was basically that we will be high academic achievers, period. So in my coaches, um, agreements, we renewed and redid those that they will um, have incentives for their programs to be 3.0 and above GPA, team GPA. So it's not just get eligible, it's um, get eligible and make sure that you're in the top tier of all the students on our campus. And so we take much pride being a part of the UC and high academic rigors that is here and want to make sure they don't lose sight of that. Uh, the second part is the athletic um, component, and um, we were probably the bottom third, not probably, we were, I did a lot of research on this program before I got here, we were the bottom third in a lot of sports. 
Um, I asked that my coaches and student athletes get to the top third. So I gave them a, a charge and I gave them a mark of expectation. And we um, brought not just our student athletes on board with that high expectation, but our cheer and our dance, our, our band. We wanted to bring this in so together as a family of Highlanders and not just focus on the athletes. Um, I think that it takes a team of people to build a, a, a high profile athletic department. So um, this year we've had a, our first national champion in track, um, indoor track, Vesta Bell. Not sure if you all know her. Um, but that's the first national, I mean, we competed against UGAs, um, UCLAs, I mean, the best in the country, and she won in the weight throw event. Uh, we also had an undefeated run in women's basketball, which was amazing. We didn't win the big one, which was the Big West Championship, but with seven people, you know, hey, I, um, I was just glad that they were able to get through the, the um, season um, as healthy as they did, uh, going undefeated, not losing to any Big West teams. So our uh, men's soccer team ended up beating UCLA. They were number eight at the time. Um, that was a huge feat. We were excited um, about that. So we've got a lot of good things going on. So what, we, um, what I come to solicit from you is um, three things. And I've been telling people in the community and on the campus everywhere I've had an opportunity to speak at um, that we need you to help promote the good things that are going on with your athletic program. It's not our program. It's your program. Um, so um, help us promote, if you're on social media, you know our hashtags and um, our um, um, social media handles. Please, if you see things, please re repost them, send them out, like them, share, make comments. Uh, many of you already are doing that um, and we appreciate that. That helps us get the word out, so help us promote. We've tried to give out much more gear so that you can actually wear Highlander gear. We renewed an Adidas contract this year where we got about 100% more um, product, free product, just to make sure that we can outfit again our um, support teams, our uh, band, our cheer and our dance, as, as well as our athletes. But we had the students in mind as well with the bookstore so that you can wear the same thing that the um, student athletes wear. So that's going to be exciting. Um, we need your presence. So the second thing we need is your presence. So. Um, we say in, in the sports world, we need butts in the seats. So hopefully y'all, that wasn't a cuss word in here, but um, we need butts in the seats. We need butts in the seats. And this year we had a 60% increase in attendance. 60%, which is great, which you, the student body, did that. So we need more of that. Um, and then the last thing I would um, solicit to you is that we find ways to collaborate and partner. So if you're doing things on campus, you need us to pick up trash. I heard someone picking up trash on campus. Our women's basketball team is actually going to find a street in a couple of weeks and do that same thing right here in the community. So um, I'm sure that things that you all are doing uh, that we may not know about unless you, you know, share it with us. Um, I have uh, raised my hand with the um, with the. Um, the staff assembly, as well as I would raise my hand with you as the Senate to say, if you need to contact someone, you can contact me directly. And those student athletes that are available, those coaches and programs that are available, we will give them the opportunity to, to work with you. So um, three Ps, if you can remember the three Ps, we need you to promote us, we need your presence, and we need you to help us partner. So that partner is a win-win, it's a collaborative effort. Um, it's not just we tell you we need you to come to the game. No, is you tell us you need us to come to an event as well that, that you all have it on campus. So um, if you have any questions for me, I'll be uh, glad to fill those now. And um, if not, again, thank you so much, Taylor, for the time. Alan, appreciate it. Invite me back anytime you can have if you can have a guest, okay? I'm we'll probably taking up on that. Thank okay, you so much okay. You. You're yeah, welcome. The student athlete community is a huge part of UCR and we do understand that. Any questions for the athletic director? Of course, your floor, Senator. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to thank you for coming out. Um, I grew up in an area where sports is huge, and the university where I live by, uh, sports is huge. And I just want to bring that culture to same here because I see the potential that we have. I knew. I know people on the on the men's basketball team, on the men's soccer team, on the track team. So I, I just wanted to uh, bring more uh, awareness and marketing in order to like, you know, like some students didn't even know that we're Division One, uh, like. Uh, sport like uh, teams and uh, all our sports. Yes. So I just wanted to bring more awareness to that and I want to thank you for coming and uh, we'll keep in contact and uh, work on and partner up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much. And let me tell you, um, I report to Chancellor Kim, and I saw my colleague Jim in here. Um, Jim and I work very closely together. We're in meetings every Monday together, um, hashing out a lot of things to make this place better. Um, and, and I was hired to elevate the profile of the athletic program. And so um, I plan to do that, and I know I can't do it without the student support. So um, I brought some schedules. I know you guys have the internet, and you can pull it off the website. But uh, we're in spring sports right now. We have two sports that are really competing right here on our campus, and that's softball and baseball. So if I can leave them, and you can you know, pass those out, we'd love to see you um, there. Hawaii is here this weekend in softball. Um, catch us, hang out over there with us, and have some fun, OK? Of course. Take care. Moving on to next item on the agenda, the GCAP allocation request. Senate shall discuss the action on the GCAP allocation request. I believe it's the amount of $400, correct? Right? Um, the item is in the preview packet. The item is in the preview packet and on the big screen. If anyone in the public wishes to copy the report and they cannot see it on the screen, simply let us know and we'll find a way to email to you or get your hard copy. Uh, GCAP Director, your floor, or GCAP Chair, I'm Hi everyone, my name is Eileen Kilbar. I am the GCAP Chair slash Sustainability Coordinator. So I'm here, um, I'm here basically to request approval of allocating $400 to um, Brian Cruz, who will be hosting two events for next week for like Earth Week and those two events include a performance that focuses on water conservation and also a workshop that's going to focus on the seed exchange, the seed exchange program. So on April 19th we'll have the performance and it's actually be uh, from a UCR alumni. Her name is Elizabeth Cameron and she got her bachelor's here in dance and Native American studies and her performance is going to focus around, around water conservation and the importance of it and there will be a short discussion then followed by her uh, performance. And then the seed exchange will take place April 21st and it will be held at the Art Garden. And basically this, piece, this workshop will focus on um, to design to a gather an understanding of growing a sustainable food garden and the importance of preserving seeds. And this will be a collaboration with Mujeres de Maiz. So that is pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be free to answer them. Or if not, I can always get you in contact um, with Brian Cruz who is um, leading this um, project. Any questions for the director? <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry I forgot the meeting today. It's fine. Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion? I move to approve the GCAP allocation. Of? $400 for Earth Week festivities. There's a motion on the table to um, approve the GCAP allocation request for $400 for Earth Week. It's made Earth Week festivities. Earth Week festivities, my mistake. Mm -hmm. um, made by the President of the Board. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Senator Thiel. Is there um, any discussion or debate on this item? Seeing none. All in favor? Actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. 900. And on that note, the GCAP allocation money is approved. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, when is Earth Week facilities again? Um, April 19th and April 21st are the workshop and the um, performance. But there are other really things going on sponsored by different departments. So keep an eye out for that. Perfect, thank, thank you. you. Moving on to the Finance Committee Report. Senate shall discuss the action report from the Finance Committee. Again, it is in the preview packet. And on the screen. This is how I lose it. Um, is anyone from Finance wish to report, or do you want to read it? Uh, Senator Wilson? I just don't have it, so if you can hand it to me, I'll just read it. Okay, it'll be right there in about 10 seconds. Allocated $750 that passed 400. 
accounting society was allocated, was tabled actually. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. I think we had problems with corn or something, something happened. Uh, or maybe there was an issue in uh, the paperwork. Pacific Island Islander Grant, that was passed 400. They allocated $1,500 for their uh, I think the pizza, uh, pizza event that will take place April 16th here at UCR, up in Rio 2. Cross campus entrepreneurs were allocated $750. That passed 400. Gamma Phi Beta was allocated $1,500 for their 5K run, which will take place, I believe, this weekend. Uh, that passed 400. Delta Chi was allocated $1,500 for their basketball tournament. Um, it's a philanthropic event as well. That passed 400. Um, and the organization contingency in balance is $17,585. Eight hundred forty-five. Um, and the SUCR contingency opening balance will be very good. Thing. <laughs> Four thousand one hundred eighty dollars. Uh, Lori, Executive Director Lori Sinclair, came in and asked for fifteen hundred dollars to cover the um, as some type of space or leverage for um, the senior barbecue that would take place this quarter. Is that correct, Lori? Um, she will be doing camp. Sorry, I'm doing something else. Do you want to elaborate on that or did I do it? Oh, well, it's just kind of to cover the gift that we give out to see a barbecue. The chancellor does pay for most of it, but um, uh, in order to be able to buy the license plate grades, which everybody always asks for, I need a little, little extra money. And since we are going with Carl's Jr. this year, and they do give us a refund because we're a nonprofit, um, I might not even really use all that, but I wanted the buffer in order to put the order out initially for, for that. And, and the decorations this year are very expensive, so um, I was glad to get it. Thank you. All right. Hopefully, hopefully with your with your approval. Oh. <laughs> um, so the total allocation for ASCCR um, contingency fees was fifteen hundred dollars. ASCCR contingency closing balance is two thousand six hundred eighty dollars. And the meet was adjourned at 4.47 p.m. And, and that that's 4 zero, 0 Cool. Any questions for the Senator of the Finance Committee? Any questions at all? Seeing none. Um, Senator Bosom, would you have any motions? I move to approve the finance, Vice President of Finance Report for this meeting. Second. There's a motion to approve the um, Finance Committee Report. And the allocated funds, and is, is there a second? So a second by Senator Alcantara. Are there any debate on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? The vote is unanimous, and the finance committee report is approved. <laughs> Moving on to uh, the Legislative Review Committee. President, oh, so we haven't met. Yeah, well, we met last week during the legislation submitted. Uh, so we'll be meeting again tomorrow at 1 p.m. And so if you have any ledger, if you'd like to work on developing ledge, uh, yes, please let me know. Any questions or comments for the uh, Senator Willis? Seeing none, moving forward to House and Wellness Committee. We are still waiting on members to contact me. Currently, only two out of the six have contacted me. And so I'm going to be working with the personnel director to personally contact them. And if not, I'm just going to call them for next week and see who shows up and then we'll go from there. Cool. Any questions for the Senator Chair of the Health and Wellness Committee? Seeing none again, moving forward to Election Committee Report. The Election Committee will report to any news to the Senate. <coughs> All right, so a few strikes to report on. Um, and these are reported after the appeals process has been exhausted. And so at this point, there's a couple different appeals being processed right now. And so that update will come hopefully next week. Um, two strikes have been assigned to the Your Side Party. Uh, two strikes have been assigned to the Orange Party. Both of those were for materials being distributed prior to election committee approval. Uh, and then one strike has been assigned to Delshawn Bosin for negative campaign. Um, that's the entirety of the strikes that have been assigned up to this point through Elections Committee. Um, let me see. 
And so for the rest of this report, it's essentially, again, to illustrate, give a couple examples as to some of the accompanying behavior uh, to laptoping that's really a concern. Um, one incident was on Monday morning, uh, a campaign volunteer approached two young women, uh, as two first year women, by the way, as they were going to class. Uh, they, the individual asked them to go onto the site elections.ucr.edu uh, on the phones. Uh, they did so, they signed in, and then the campaign volunteer more or less ended up taking the phone from them, uh, telling them what to vote, filling in the votes for them, pressing vote for the young ladies, and then giving them the phone back. Um, another incident was quite similar to this, in which a campaign volunteer um, did not allow the individual, once they had signed into the phone and passed it uh, over to them after asking for it, in which they filled out the form and then hit submit for them. Um, one individual was not able to even read the warning that had been placed at the top uh, because it was being blocked by the individual. Um, one individual, let me see here. Uh, one young woman was, she described it as being followed across campus uh, by an individual campaigning. Um, and that was a young lady that, as I stated earlier, uh, ended up describing herself as being panicked and so she fled uh, with voting. And so these are some of the cases in which there is problematic behavior occurring in which these students, depending on the circumstances, are being placed in positions where there's so much pressure on them, um, whether they're being cornered or, or what have you, by the behavior of the campaign individual, that it's putting them in a poor position to vote. Um, these are just a couple examples. I could go on for a few, but a lot of these are unfortunately uh, kind of vague. Uh, a lot of the reports are just incident, just explanations that there had been an incident of laptoping upon follow up with them. It was <coughs> no, I don't think it's severe. No, I don't think it was harassment. I just saw the email and I wanted to inform you all that it happened. And so, uh, ultimately, it still falls in line with what I've been saying since I first took this office that I do not approve of laptoping when it is legalized. And I have uh, followed through with my promise to make sure that I took all the steps that I could to try to reach out to students. Uh, some of you may have seen the op-ed that I wrote <coughs> the highlighter that was uh, featured in this last, uh, most recent edition. Uh, in addition to implementing the warning at the top of the voting page, uh, I've been informed that there's now also a button that you can uh, immediately sign out right after the warning if you are being laptoped and you feel pressure. So uh, for those who haven't voted yet, you know, please be sure that you're able to utilize that. Uh, if you do feel pressured in any given situation. Um, but other than that, as I said, after the first email that I sent out, there were quite a few reports that were concerning. However, after the email this morning, nowhere near that magnitude. Uh, so I'm very, very happy to say that uh, the pressure is working on candidates to not engage in these kinds of course tactics. Thank you, Director. Um, quick questions. Yes. Um, for the <coughs> campaign volunteer um, complaint occurrences, there are no... Sorry, say that again? For the occurrences of the volunteers that you mentioned, um, lack of it, were there, there were no, it was just a simple complaint that's being notified, there were no violations filed or I've reached out to some of the individuals that have uh, contacted me and described the of situations, asking if they wish for me to pass along their report to the Judicial Council. I've received some replies which indicate yes, they do want it to proceed, but I've also received a handful that said no, I just wanted to inform you, of course. don't worry. Um, and for the four strikes, um, well the two strikes to each party and the one strike to the individual candidate, 
Um, those are all not being appealed, or? Those have already been through the appeals process. Both, both those have been through the appeals, all those have been through the appeals process. All of them have been through the appeals process, and that's why I'm reporting them. Perfect. Um, out of respect to the individuals that still have appeals based on whatever violations or strikes have been assigned, um, I'm not reporting those. Cool. Uh, there are a number of questions for the director. And since this is sensitive for a very public topic, uh, after the, the board, I would like to open up to questions. If you don't mind, director, too. I have certainly don't. Whatever. Good. 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 Probably should we do that and wait for public comment? Public comment? Yeah. Yeah, actually, good. Yeah. That's. Um, I really don't care when it happens. Of course. <laughs> um, I answer them at any point. Sorry, let's okay, we'll start the queue. We'll start the. President Porter Four, Senator Bosen, Senator Steelhart, any questions from this pool? Possibly. And then so <laughs> And we'll add President Ricardo to the queue. Last call? Oh, it's the uh, Vice President Cole. Uh, one more time? Uh, Okay, so for the two party strikes, you mentioned they were concerning like campaign materials being sent in, or distributed too early. I was wondering for two strikes, is that is there like precedent for that? Is that like an arbitrary number to assign two strikes, or is there a particular reason why it was two? Um, to make a long story short, the first circumstance that was presented to the elections committee was a pretty egregious uh, overstep as far as not going through the approval process. Um, they were presented with two options, one in which they could retract all the campaign materials. Uh, they would only suffer one strike, and then um, only half of that total would be uh, removed from their budgets, which is not the full exertion of the power that's reserved by the elections code to the elections committee. Uh, the other option was that actually they could receive three strikes. They could keep all the materials still dispersed. Um, and of course, the full amount would still be removed because they're using the materials. Mm. So those were designed to take action on the fact that they had distributed materials without approval, um, while still making it where it wasn't just this easy choice of, oh, well, of course we'll only take a strike because we can keep all our materials out there. And we can strike. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's so the next one. Yeah, so while for that, how did it land on two? Because that was one and three. They went through the appeals process and they got it moved down to two. Okay. Um, next on the queue is Senator Wilson. Okay, I just want to uh, clarify for the members of the galley, negative, camp uh, negative campaigning has a very negative connotation, clearly. <laughs> um, I personally don't think I negative campaign negatively and I did not go through the appeals process. I actually forgot to appeal. Um, what I was excited for was saying that I'm the only qualified candidate. Um, and I forgot to appeal that type of violation. So I just wanted to clarify it, uh, just in case you thought I was on social media slandering anyone. Uh, and I did not go through, to the, I did not go through the appeals process, is just what I want to say. Because if I appealed and then it was determined that that was a fact of campaigning that, so I just wanted to clarify that. Those to, two. to mitigate some of that, absolutely. Um, elections Committee, because this was a strike assigned through Elections Committee, in our discussion, it was actually very close between whether we assigned a strike or did not assign a strike. And so uh, Dalshan's comment in question was, as far as campaigning goes, very mild. However, by my interpretation, uh, it was an untrue statement. So. Thank you. Moving on next to the queue, Senator Thielar. Um, so, because it's elections, I find Yik Yak very <laughs> fun to go on. Um, I noticed people on Yik Yak were telling people to send emails about strikes to ASPB. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, received an email from an individual wishing to report laptop being that was saying that it was ASPB elections. Okay. So, I, just I mean, sure honestly, I like in all my emails and all the materials and everything that's going on, we're making pretty clear that it's ASPCR. And so, that's neck. <laughs> 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 like, ultimately, you know, as far as mistakes like that, I can't be on the exact moderating that. 
I just want to say that there is potential because they were throwing out the yeah. ASPB email that you might want to reach I'm out to ASPB. I'm certainly hoping that the ASPB, if they're receiving emails, will just force them more. <laughs> but I will reach out to them to help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glad support takes online complaints seriously. Uh, moving on to Sampra. I just have a couple questions uh, just to clarify for myself. Is it a three strike system and then you're out? Nope, five strikes. Five strikes, okay, those guys. And then I'm guessing after all the appeals are done, then the results will be placed out. Yes. Okay, that was it. Yeah. <coughs> President Arano. Um, so my question is kind of similar to what I asked earlier. So those two circumstances that you mentioned where the individual handed over their phone to the volunteer or the candidate, so that happened on Monday, so is that considered a violation? I, I just want to... That's going to be handed over to the Judicial Council for them to judge. Okay. And then my follow-up question was, I think you mentioned one of those who did that was a volunteer. Yes. Um, and I know that the volunteers were given the PowerPoint that you had created before elections began. And is that detail on that PowerPoint? Because I would argue that if it wasn't on the PowerPoint that those individuals may not have known that that was wrong until the email was sent on Wednesday. I mean, today. Ultimately, again, it's um, the candidate's responsibility that whatever volunteers they do get on board are following along with the uh, elections code and the values of the field within that. Um, whether the candidates or the parties are held accountable for the actions of the volunteers, in these situations, again, rests in the hands of the Judicial Council. Um, yeah, I, I personally am not even taking an interpretation on it at this point. I am directly just giving it to them. Okay. I totally understand the harassment part, but I don't really think like me handing over my phone to someone is harassment unless someone's like, give me your phone. So I, I don't know, it's just kind of a little confusing to me. Again, that's not something that I'm trying to remember. <coughs> this is something that I'm passing along to them because the students that do want to pass along feel as though it constituted harassment. They felt it severe enough, they felt coerced enough that they want it at least reviewed and Okay. Ultimately, that's the right. Yeah, I get that. I'm, I'm just personally confused. Okay. Next on the queue is Vice President Schaefer. I just want to use my time to know in the gallery if anyone wants to be by it. Anyone in the gallery wish to direct any questions to the director on um, last concerns, are there any volunteers that are to, or any people who wish to bring up notice of any of my Possible violations, a question to this board. We're seeing none. Uh, last call for questions for the director from this from this board. Okay, we move forward. Next item on the agenda is actually public comment. Public comment is meant for anyone in the public to address this board and anything that transpired on this agenda today. Yes, of course. But I'm gonna say it's probably it was better suited for public forum, but I wasn't here for that time. Is that still okay? Um, of course. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Sergio Robles. I'm a second year political science student. Um, I have a question regarding ASUCR and its local community engagement. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but as of recently, uh, with the city's annual budget, there's a $9 million deficit shortfall. We're going to be $12 million from next year. And at the same time right now, there's a mayor mayoral elections for 2016. And so my question is, um, I don't know what department does this, but is ASUCR taking any engagement to represent students at these events? Um, because this is actually a really big, uh, I think, uh, issue for a lot of students. More than half of us are commuters, and a lot of us day to day, we deal with these safety services and programs, and they're looking to be cut. And so not only that, but also knowing what kind of mayor to vote for is important as well, because uh, mayors have different uh, ideas on their platforms. So I was wondering, is it ASUCR doing anything to represent students at this time? I mean, I'm not saying that like, y'all aren't there, but I am saying that, for example, my brother and I, we do make time to go to these meetings, and when I do go to these meetings, we're the only students there representing other student interests. And what I've heard as well during this election season is one executive candidate has said, the city doesn't care about you, we need to be more aggressive. So what I say to you is, how can we think like that if we're not even going to these meetings to represent the students? Can anybody answer that question for me? Uh, let's still show hands for any questions or comments for the public representative. Uh, first, I'd just like to say that 
um, UCR is an integral part of Riverside community and vice versa. And there are several members of this board currently who are working with different aspects of the Riverside community. Um, and I will ask, well, I guess we can bring that to address, but before that, does anyone wish to we'll start with Senator Jackson? Um, currently, right now, I sit on the Lobby Corps Committee, and we're actually planning during week five or week six to do a lobby visit where we're going to be talking to the elected officials currently in office right now mm -hmm. um, as well. So that's what I think that we're doing on that end. Okay. Um, if you could like leave maybe the times of when like these meetings are occurring, I could see if me and other students from the Lobby Corps would like to like go sit on these meetings like, before that occurs. Um, awesome. Thank you. Maybe after, could you give me some information about Lobby Corps? Because that's something I was, was a part of last year, but I didn't really pick up. And so I actually don't know when that's sort of again this year. So if you have any information when you guys meet. We meet um, on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Okay. Cool. Perfect time again. Vice President Schaefer. Hey, so um, the community is something that's really important to the external affairs office. Um, I just got into office, so we're working on reaching out to the community, and there's been like a list of things. Um, um, one of the things that's important to students that we're, we've been focusing on is the housing ordinance. So, um, we're setting up meetings to lobby specific council members um, on things like the housing ordinance and meeting with them, um, as well as going to city council meetings. Um, I'm looking for other ways to get involved in the community, though. I want to reach out to the Athletic Director for getting involved with them with some community service in the community. Um, but if there's any other things that you think that um, people in the External Affairs Office need to be at, we'll make sure that someone's there. Um, and I know you all have been doing some amazing things like with the library and you're really involved in the community, so um, just let me know and we'll make sure that someone's there. Thank and, you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Senator Chow. Hi. Well, Hi. currently I sit on Mayor's College Forum with another ASUCR member. We consist of all the different universities around Riverside. Mm -hmm. Definitely I would love to sit down, talk to you, discuss further uh, planning, market and tactics that we can hit around Riverside as well, at uh, UCR as well as the other universities in order to bring a more college presence within the community. I think that's something we've been working hard. As Dana, know, as Dana knows, he attended the amazing college race, which we put on last weekend. And so definitely I would love to work with you to further discuss it. Definitely, we'd love to have that time where we can sit down and just collaborate. And anybody that would like to join us, welcome to. And Vice President Schaefer again. Um, I just thought of something. We could create a committee for that and make sure we're all and reviewing the bylaws. So I think that's something that we need to do to specifically vote some community for years to come. Um, I can incorporate that into our bylaws. I'd definitely be interested in that if you'd like to talk at some point. Let's do that as well. Okay. Awesome. Uh, any last comments or with the member of the question? Seeing none, thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Any other public comment this time? Seeing none, we move forward to roundtable announcements. We will start at the right side. Vice President Schaefer. Pass. Senator Wilson. Pass. Oh, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm just kidding. We have our Martins Conference planning committee tomorrow, uh, ACTR Conference Room at 3 p.m. It's coming up in like two weeks. So. Oh, and we have 161 applications already. Last week was, last week meeting was 79. Now it's 161, so a double. Yeah, that's it. Um, just so you all know, uh, Mr. Rico, um is our pageant uh, that my organization I'm part of is doing. It's actually going to be occurring on May 10th. Um, <coughs> me and a few of the other of my sisters that are part of this organization have already posted the link on our GoFundMe page. Um, all the proceeds go back goes back to the women's shelter here in Riverside, as well as to other programs that help with um, victims of domestic violence. So we'll look out for those. And their fundraiser is happening um, up until uh, May 10th as well. Uh, Senator Christina is absent today, but I'm sure she would like me to announce that she will be in Kati Punan's PCM this weekend at the Fox Theater at 7. Uh, she is acting in it, and she's amazing. I watched uh, like a pre-screening of it, and she's, she's great. So go support her, um, and you can probably go buy tickets from her too. So just talk to her about it, hopefully she gets well soon. Um, Sigma Kappa is holding uh, their fourth annual casino night. Uh, tickets are $10, and with the $10, you get uh, dinner and $200 in um, playing money for uh, casino games. And we're also going to be having raffles. Um, I think 
we're trying to get tickets to LED to rock off. Um, but it's going to be April 22nd at 5 p.m. in Hub 302, and you can buy tickets for me or anyone in Sigma Kappa. All right, so we're talking about philanthropy and stuff. So Campus League was having, <laughs> well, we're having, we're currently raffling, we're selling raffle tickets for $3. Um, the grand prize is a ticket to Nocturnal, and the second prize is two tickets to Slander and Nightmare in July. Um, so yeah, raffle tickets are $3, uh, and it goes down to want to buy more. So the proceeds will be going to our Military Heroes campaign, um, which is a philanthropy that deals with veterans and veteran services. So if you're interested in that, uh, hit me up or any other Kappa Sigma. That's it. I'm not helping out with any philanthropies, but you all have a good week. Well, I just want to thank Daniel for coming out to the amazing college race. That means a lot. And also, too, I know Eileen also had a team. Um, UCR did win second place, so that was pretty awesome. So, proud to the team and UCR won second place. And also, top to one first, Joel. Top to your track team. so good. But, anyways. UCR, congrats. Scotty was out there along with all the other mascots, so it was pretty fun to see them dance, do a dance off. But look at how this got for next year. Okay, hi everyone. So tomorrow, Lorac at UCR will be hosting a Breaking Down Success How to Become a Lawyer. So if anyone is interested in um, going to law school or any of that, there will be two Rotarian lawyers that will be there and they own their own like firm here in UC, uh, at, at Ridden Riverside. They're amazing people. I actually got an opportunity to meet one of them at Ryla this weekend. So um, it's at 3 p.m., 3 to 4 p.m. at Hub 367, and that'll be tomorrow. And just, they told me to announce, you can learn um, what routes to take, you get to network with professionals, and they also told me to tell y'all to discover the key to success. So let me know if you have questions, and yeah. Yes, I will. Who wants an email? Because I can forward you the email right now. So, one, two, three. Okay, I'll email it to you right now. And that's it. Pass. Pass. Kobe Bryant's last game is airing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a legend. So, uh, watch the game. It's actually just started. So, that's the work for his last game. <laughs> Voted. Gavin vote. Gavin vote. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, that's really exciting. So, and not a lot of people have been claiming their raffle tickets, so please like spread the word that they can go and claim that no matter how they vote. Like I said, they only have to show a little bit of evidence. Uh, because yesterday we had five people claim their raffle tickets, and so everyone wants something. <laughs> I'm not joking! <laughs> so, seriously, we have stuff to give away. There's no reason not to go and claim your ticket if you are uh, deserving of one and win something. So, please. Um, so, last week I said I was going to get lemon bars, but I fell asleep and burned two of my bags. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep, okay, I was tired, but. Um, <laughs>
Jonathan. Jonathan. Make it happen. Jonathan.